Okay. Okay. I'll go ahead and call our June 9th South Central Workforce Development Board meeting to order. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Trevor Shirley. And just as a, a little reminder to try to keep your cameras on during our meeting, it's very helpful um, that we can confirm when voting on anything. Um, I'll go ahead and turn it over to John for his opening remarks. Yeah, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody. It's good to reconvene. Uh, it's, um, it feels like it's been a long time since we've met, but it really hasn't. Um, so I want to welcome any any uh, anybody that's new to this forum. I, I welcome you to uh, um, this this board meeting. This is a public meeting. Um, you know, in terms of uh, how this is organized, uh, we're going to follow a familiar pattern. Uh, we've got some business up front. Um, so we'll have some information updates to uh, the board and we'll have some voting actions for you to consider. We'll then transition into our focus on strategic goals. Um, as, as you know, one thing we're very proud of as a workforce board is that we have a living strategic plan. We didn't write a strategic plan and put it on the shelf to collect dust. We, we wrote one and we live by it and we will report back to you on it. And so today's focus is going to be on strategic goal number two, which is our student focused strategic, uh, strategic goal. And June's a good time to present that because we just wrapped up, you know, a lot of high school graduations and some college graduations. And so we're gonna report back to you on how we've supported the students this spring. And then lastly, um, you know, we'll wrap up today. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some organizational change and transition that's coming our way. And I'll report back to you on what that looks like and how we're gonna continue some of the so some of the good work we've been doing. So with that, um, I will, I've concluded my re opening remarks and I'll turn it back over to our, our board chair. All right, thank you, John. The first order of business this morning is to approve the April 14th uh, minutes. Everyone should have received and, and the minutes already from Deronda. Um, if, are there any comments uh, regarding that, those minutes? And if not, can I get a motion to approve? This is Beverly Ford and I motion to approve. Thank you, Beverly. Is there a second? This is Cassie Seltzer. I'll second. Thank you, Cassie. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. We'll move on to executive committee update. Our executive committee met on, April, on May 14th, and these are the items that we covered during that meeting, and John has a slide up for you all to follow. Thank you. We approved the lease renewal for the board's office space at 2355 National Road. The original lease was signed in 2019 and we had an option to renew annually for uh, three additional years and that would take us through May of 2024. Um, the lease terms uh, with WKU stay the same. That's $3,761.33 a month and that uh, equates to 40 $45,135.96 annually, and that's at a rate of $16 per square foot. And approved conditional renewal of the one-stop operator contact contingent on the cost being below $80,000. The bid that came in after that meeting exceeded the $80,000 threshold, so John will be presenting, presenting the contract renewal for action here in just a few minutes. John provided a series of um, <coughs> informational updates to the executive, uh, executive committee on the board's new hired staff um, that are focused on new Americans and military veterans and spouses, the status of the fiscal service agent contract, an announcement regarding the departure of Amanda Pettigo from the career team executive director role, a timeline update for the board's annual external audit and an update regarding compliance monitoring team by the state. And last, um, the executive committee established performance goals for John. The performance goals were organized around six areas of responsibility and, and established objective and measurable goals. And uh, we will meet again. Uh, I'll have next meeting. Okay, so I can pass it back over to John for a fiscal management contract renewal. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, go forward a slide. 
so uh, before we kind of before we dive into the the the, the next two agenda items, uh, which uh, re regarding our fiscal agent contract renewal and one stop operator contract renewal, I thought what I would do is just briefly describe the four major components of a local workforce board. And so what you see up here, you know, uh, you know, from from uh, left to right. The, the four major components are, you know, we have a we a service provider. In our case, that's career team. Um, we have a fiscal agent, which is national able. We have a one-stop operator, Mr. Frank Garabato, who is a who is a career team employee. They they won the contract, and then we have the, your board staff. You know, myself and Brian and Leslie and and all the folks that uh, have been hired by the board. You can see there's a brief description of what each of these four components of a workforce board do. Uh, and then you kind of along the bottom, you can see that, you know, in terms of the WIO service provider, that's contracted out. There's the dates of the contract. The fiscal agent is contracted out. There's the dates are at the bottom and the one-stop operator is contracted out. So, um, Brian, if you could build one. So, you know, I'm, what I'm going to talk about a little bit real quick is um, on the next two agenda items is the fiscal agent and the one-stop operator. So let's go forward. In terms of the fiscal agent, I mean, this is, you know, we've been we've been uh, presenting on this all spring. Uh, we had to go through an RFP process this year to, uh, you know, either, you know, to, to get a new uh, fiscal uh, con fiscal agent contract in place. Um, so we, we put out an RFP. We went through that process, collected bids. Um, a, a review committee met on April 27th to review the bids. And it, it turns out there was only one bid, but that review committee was made up of Judge Buchanan, Judge Fleener, Judge Harper, Judge Barnes, and our treasurer, uh, Ms. Cassie Seltzer. And, and, and just kind of as a reminder, it's, it's the judge executives that have um, decision authority over who the fiscal agent is. And so that's why this review committee is primarily comprised of, of judge, judge executives with one representative from our board. So anyway, they reviewed the one bid from National Able. That bid came in. It was the, the rate remained the same from the previous couple of years at ninety thousand dollars a year. Uh, so National Able was awarded that contract for one year, and it's renewable up to two additional years. Uh, and um, and again, the cost will be ninety thousand dollars a year. So that's a that is a completed action, um, and we're, we're we've been really really pleased with National Able over the last couple of years. I think everybody has. We've had very clean audits, and we, it's just been a, a great working relationship, and we're, we're pleased to continue with them. Uh, all right, one-stop operator contract renewal. So, okay, on this one. So, um, again, this is a contract that's been in place for a couple of years. It's always a it's 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 written as a one-year contract with an option to renew, um, renew annually. And so, um, when when the executive committee committee met last month, we didn't have the numbers in. We didn't have the bid from from a, a career team on what that on what that amount would be. And so, uh, during the executive committee, we you know the, the executive committee as an action approved that I if the bid came in at eighty thousand dollars or less for the year then I could go ahead and negotiate that and, and, and push that through. After the executive committee, uh, you know, it, it was a few hours after the executive committee, the bid came through and it actually came in above $80,000. So that's why I'm gonna bring it to you today for, to, to consider for approval. If you could go forward the slide, Brian. So what you're gonna see on here, on the left, you see last year's bid um, in that, and what we had agreed to for that contract was $76,800. This year, the bid has come in at $85,000. Now, the reason for that increase is because um, what Career Team has indicated is that they would like to um, uh, initiate a 401k for their employees. And so the real jump in this amount comes in the in line item two, which is the staff fringe benefits. So there's a there's a that's where the bulk of that increase comes from. There's a little bit of salary increase and there's some increase to indirect costs. So the bid has come in at $85,000. And so what I'm going to ask, uh, what I'm gonna ask the board to consider is to consider approval of renewing this contract at $85,000. Um, 
with one caveat that I, and I might not get the wording on this caveat correctly. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've talked to Holland, we can afford the $85,000, but the caveat I would put on this is that we approve it at 85, but I don't want to start paying the 85 rate until the 401k is put in place. So if it takes six months to put the 401k in place, then at that, that, at that point in time, we negotiate, that's when we go to the increased rate. Until then, we, we come in at a lesser rate. So I would like permission to negotiate that with career team um, so that we, you know, so we can continue this contract, but do it in a reasonable manner. Is there any discussion on this? What'd you say? Okay, I make that motion that uh, John be granted permission to negotiate this contract. Okay, thank you, Beverly. Is there a second? This is TJ, I'll second. Thank you, TJ. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Okay, John, I think it's back to you. Okay, I'll go forward to slide. Okay, so the next item is I want to talk to you about is a, a reentry memorandum of agreement between the Cumberland Workforce Board and our board. So uh, just a quick history, uh, for the last two years, we've had a, a shared staff member or staff members focused on reentry. And this started back in, uh, in late 2019, um, our board and the Cumberlands co-wrote a, a grant request to the state asking for money to have uh, to hire uh, two people focused on reentry programming. And that award was, uh, was granted in, uh, to the tune of $136,000. And initially, Aaron was hired by the Cumberlands, and we hired a gentleman named Millie Azar uh, on our side. And um, and then shortly thereafter, um, you know, COVID hit, and things happened, and Ily Azar did not stay with us. And so, uh, in conversation with the Cumberlands, we moved to Aaron was doing such a great job that we moved to make Aaron the one person over both regions, all, all 23 counties, and that's been. That's kind of been his role. That his that's been his role since about September of 2020. And then you know uh, you know without without getting into all the gory details, there were some other monies that came in that we were able to braid in around Aaron's position. Um, in in the spring of 2021, uh, we the Cumberlands and South Central again pursued another statewide reserve grant, and we were awarded seventy nine thousand um, dollars to and, and that what that allowed us to do with the with the other braided income that had come in, plus the 70, 79,000, that allowed us to hire uh, Jana Snell to be a reentry navigator to, to assist Aaron because there was so much work coming in. And so really Aaron and Jana are, you know, are fully funded through the end of this month. So go build one more. That brings us to this year. So this year, uh, we, you know, we, uh, the Cumberlands and our board went for a third round of funding for Aaron's position. We asked for $112,000, but we were only granted uh, $69,000, unfortunately. And so this is going to, and I'll get into some details on this later on, but, you know, th this is only, this is enough money to sustain one of our full-time positions, but not both. Um, but 69,000 is not the total, is not, the, you know, will not completely fund that one position. We have to braid in um, a little bit of WIOA from each of the workforce boards. And so what I'm suggesting here is that 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 the South Central carve out $14,500 and the Cumberland carve out $14,500 each from WIOA and put that into the pot with the 69 that comes from the state so that we have a, a total amount of, of, of $98,000 um, carved out for this position. And that, that 98,000 will cover, it's gonna cover salary and fringe and travel, mileage, supplies, admi administrative costs and so forth. So my, uh, my request today is that, um, is that the workforce board and that the, a copy of the memorandum of agreement was sent out in the, uh, in the packet, but my, my request to you today would be to get your permission to enter into this memorandum of agreement with the Cumberland's workforce board to co-fund uh, one full-time position. So if the Cumberlands are amenable to this, they're willing to do this. 
Um, they have, the last two years they have, I mean, this is they're 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 considering it right now, so they should. Oh, okay. I hope so. I mean, we're we're really getting Aaron at a steep discount. I mean, that's the way I look at it. If each of us are getting his services for fourteen thousand dollars, that's a there's no better deal in town than that. Um, Agreed. I just didn't know where they were with it. What the conversation has. Well, they're they're having their conversations about it, and I, I trust that they'll uh, that they'll they'll come through on approving it as well. Mr. Chairman, I think I would like to make that motion that we move forward on this initiative. Aaron um, has done such a great job, and this position is so very, very important um, within both regions. So I would like to make that motion. This is TJ. Thanks. Thank you, TJ. Do I have a second on that? I second that motion, Mrs. Beverly. Thank you, Beverly. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And now, uh, I guess we're down to the financial report. Good morning, Colin. Good morning. Uh, so, good morning. So, the first, uh, I would like to thank you on behalf of National Labor Network for selecting us again uh, as a fiscal agent. Uh, we have the great partnership uh, with the board. So I really appreciate uh, everybody's uh, just to and giving a trust on us uh, and selecting us uh, again for at least for ne uh, next one year. So uh, the couple things here. So uh, the financial, what we have on the screen uh, is through May 31st, which is 11 month of our fiscal year. Uh, and then we have only one month left. And as John uh, mentioned that we have the auditors, they already have engaged in some preliminary work. Uh, they started, we provided some of the information, but actual audit work would start at the last week of July and earlier August, there will there would be the field audit and they would request a lot of other information. So everything is working this point fine uh, and is on time. So as I said, so the results here through May, uh, so we original our budget uh, is $2.4 million, uh, what we annualized and board approved uh, last year. But the one thing, uh, just I remind pretty much uh, each and every time that we have the cost reimbursements programs. Uh, the BOA is all cost reimbursements. Uh, it's not uh, on the per diem base or anything else. So if we receive more money than it budgeted, it means it's a good thing. So you can see that annual budget was 2.4, our year to date from 2.3. But then we already actually booked $2.8 million because during the year we got some additional funding uh, and then because the cost reimbursement in nature so booked as a revenue as well. So our variance is favorable, cl close to $580,000. So that's the good thing. And then we are keeping the expenses on track as well. So you can see that the sub grantee expense is a little bit higher, but the one of the things that, as I said, that we did receive some additional funding and spend the money or dispose the money to the sub grantee. So not, there's no risk at this point that why we are spending or paying more money, but we had the more money than the, what we budgeted originally. Therefore, that was the reason. Uh, we have some negative uh, amounts there and we also receive a contract for the project heavy equipment for $364,000 that was not originally budgeted. So we received the money from the state, disperse it out and equipment is already in place and installed. So everything is working fine there as well. For the board expenses, we had close to $1 million that budgeted. We already, um, the year to date budget $960,000, but then we are, you can see the variance is favorable and that's real variance because John is running very tight ship and then managing expenses very good. So we only spent 849 and with the federal variance. One thing with the June, June definitely would be a little bit more expensive, uh, ex uh, more expenses because of the nature we have to close the year, wanna make sure that we uh, include all the invoices on a timely basis. So we may have more expenses in June, but it still would hit what we budgeted. So there's no risk. You can see there's a break even in the bottom line. So up to this point, whatever we spent, we collected from the state uh, and then uh, we dispersed accordingly. So I don't see any risk there. There's no risk for leaving any money on the table, especially for the VOR, uh, even though because of the COVID and what have you, but uh, that's pretty much the uh, all the financial status at this point. Any questions, any concerns? Right. If, if we don't have any questions or any comments on the financial report, uh, do you have a motion to approve? This is Bob Belts. I so motion. 
Thank you, Mr. Blitz. Do I have a second? I'll second. This is Cassie Seltzer. Thank you, Cassie. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll go down to our strategic goals. Back over to John. Brian, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that update, John. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> No, it's fine. Good morning, everybody. We're so glad to have you. So obviously that, that business uh, makes possible what we're about to share and showcase. And we're extremely proud of the efforts. Um, you know, there's there's quite a bit of money involved. There's tremendous need in our region for our uh, services and collectively what we do with our partners. And sometimes it's hard to feel on a day-to-day -day basis that we're making a dent. But I hope that you're, you're wild and impressed by when we try to, you know, package it together and show you across the region what we've accomplished. So we'll start with uh, goal number one, but our focus area today, as you can see on the agenda, is definitely going to be strategic goal number two, as John had shared. So with number one, actively engaging employers um, and driving innovative workforce solutions across the region, uh, these would be some of the bigger um, projects and efforts that we've been doing. Um, so I definitely want to draw your attention to the, the biggest one there in the middle, the employer participation at high school workforce events. So um, I've said this before when I've given this kind of report, it's hard to break out and completely um, the strategic goals from one another because there is so much overlap. So for serving students, um, it takes employers to, to do that to achieve our goal of getting them employment. Um, but when we look at what we've done for employers, we've been bringing them to high schools uh, two college uh, institutions, and you'll hear about that in a moment, um, but that was a flurry of activity, and you'll hear lots of good details about that, um, so it's been a big spring um, and a lot of mileage uh, put on some, some people's cars for that, and a lot of students served, and so in addition to that, uh, some of our outreach to uh, the general population that are not students includes the Talent Tuesday events that we've done, um, and we've been doing those in different uh, communities, different counties, We've also had sort of an uptick in the number of employer visits. Uh, you know, we've had um, Jake uh, with career team and the business services ro uh, rep role and um, a lot more requests for employers leaning in, uh, listening to ideas that we have to give them and, uh, you know, from, from community resources to just our workforce board and WIOA services. Um, Aaron Pointer and others also organized a second chance uh, hiring webinar. And so the great thing about a webinar is it lives perpetually. So it wasn't dependent on who was available to be in the room or join in that moment live. Um, so we uh, should be making that available on our website soon if it's not already. Um, and the Southern Kentucky Reentry Council uh, was the main spearhead for that one. And um, trying to, to show again, as employers are leaning in, a way they can tap into that pool. And then we continue to have a lot of uh, good discussion and uh, contribute to the workforce participation work group that's been meeting uh, since, since late last fall. So as far as how we would assess ourselves, you know, you look there at the dot uh, where we started at the beginning of the year, sort of, you know, not quite in the middle. Um, and, and we would say that uh, we, we've definitely hit the mid mark of where we would want to be if um, moving to the right indicates progress. So we um, expect that as these projects move forward, uh, that we would uh, by first quarter, um, you know, uh, later this summer, early fall, we would be uh, continuing to move things along, so. All right, Any, have any anybody have any questions about strategic goal number one or any of those areas? I'll move it into strategic goal two. Like I said, we've got a lot of exciting stuff to share. Brian, I'd just like to know what's the participation percentage in your talent chiefs? Mm -hmm. We will be taking a look at that actually next week. It's been mixed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, been very mixed. So, you know, the strategy has been <laughs> to partner with locations um, that can give us good traffic. Uh, that are accessible to the populations and the communities where we're at. Um, and so we've, you know, we've had hits and misses, to be honest. Uh, we've had uh, groups that we thought were going to join that at the last minute, you know, couldn't come. We've been at a couple of libraries and those have worked pretty well. We're going to get a library next week in Monroe County. And uh, so that was good because they get some traffic anyway. Uh, we've done a, a small charge for the employer so that we can do some paid ads on Facebook because the, the trick is you got to be paying attention to these job ad, uh, job fairs and hiring events happening. And we selfishly all think employers and workforce board and workforce entities alike, everybody's following us on Facebook, but the reality is they're not everybody we want to is, and not all the people that are not working are. And so uh, those paid ads help help boost the awareness of the events and activities. But it's it's ranged from uh, what, maybe in the dozen to a few dozen um, have, have come. 
So we're we're gonna we're gonna be meeting and kind of looking at all the hits and misses here. Uh, those of us that have been most involved with these events. So Leslie's done a tremendous amount of marketing on our channels that exist and people that follow. And of course, as you know, with the community partner team, we're highlighting it with them every month. Um, so you know, we've had good employer participation. It still kind of remain an uneven struggle to get job seeker. So when you all assess it, you'll send it out to the board what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's definitely meetings where we will be presenting that data. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Good question. All right. Let me move on to strategic goal number two. So again, I'll do a quick assessment. So again, have to talk about the job fairs. What's been very unique, and you'll hear again in a minute, is we've done these on campus, and that's been a big game changer. We've actually had better participation at these, obviously, than we have with the, some of the more, you know, public ones that, that, that have gone on. Um, we've also pulled together, um, you know, very neat, unique projects. You've heard us talk for a while about the heavy equipment pathway. We'll give you some uh, updates on that. The Hart County CDL was a special cohort aiming to go after uh, the, the freshest, most brand new high school graduates, and, um, and we'll have an update on that. Um, we've also had several things leading up to some of those student events where we call those workforce preparation events between college students and high school students. Um, we continue to have the Commonwealth Coders program and uh, we're in full swing recruitment for that. So if you know anybody that is interested in the IT field or would be interested in, um, you know, that's one of those don't have to have any previous experience. Um, so zero to hero kind of programs, transformational training opportunity. And then we've been continuing to support, support some apprentice, apprenticeship setup opportunities. So with that, uh, you know, our assessment, again, we've made tremendous progress this year. Um, this has been one of our strong points anyway, having dedicated physicians that have worked with, uh, with these partners and the school systems. But uh, we would say that uh, we're gonna continue the momentum and uh, keep moving things forward here. So let's jump into some of the details. So as we think about what we're doing to increase career exploration opportunities, I'll let Matt Bacon, talk because he's coming from two unique uh, angles <laughs> to present the information here this morning. Okay, thank you, Brian. Um, so the combination of shutting down due to the pandemic, uh, unemployment and stimulus benefits loaned out through 2020 and 2021, and the great resignation has changed the attitude towards work and gave the job seeker the upper hand uh, over the employer most of the time. Uh, job seekers now have the freedom uh, to not show up for interviews, to leave mid-shift when newly hired, and then show up again without any repercussions, um, and to show up on day one and then not return on day two. One of our goals for all job seekers was to shift their attitude towards work to pre-pandemic normalcy. Early on in the pandemic, we identified the need to meet people where they were, and we did activities with employers such as the, the drive through job fair. Uh, which which allowed for those things to go out with ease and not much contact. Uh, during the spring semester of 2022, uh, we mashed the gas full throttle, and we picked up some tickets along the way. All right, Jasmine, <laughs> and uh, and that was to meet students where they were and to teach them the old ways of preparing for and seeking employment, redirecting their attitude towards work before they could be too influenced by the lackadaisical habits being demonstrated around them. A great realignment, if you will. Um, and we brought the regional employers with us uh, with the help and participation from regional schools, employers, and community partners. We increased career exploration opportunities, <clears throat> created and facilitated learning opportunities, and increased dual credit or credentialing opportunities. Well, next to the next slide, maybe. Yes. Uh, to carry out strategic goal number two, we enlisted the help from key partners and selflessly combined resources to be ben uh, mutually beneficial to all. We jammed our calendars full and drove just shy of 5,000 recorded miles, uh, keeping our commitments to students and their schools and ultimately the employers across the region. During the first half of the school year, we assisted 36 seniors without any post-graduation plans with exploring degree programs and the careers they could be to. Uh, we helped them complete the FAFSA, admissions, and scholarship applications. So these are students who had no plans to go to college. 
um, that we, you know, they had the, they had these, uh, I guess you could say the credentials or grades to go on, but they just had no idea it was an opportunity for them. We helped nearly 200 seniors identify higher wage, high demand occupations in the region. The most direct path to those occupations and the employers in the region who had those occupations available. During the second half of the school year, more than 40 visits uh, to high schools across the region were conducted. In addition to college related services, the board provided assistance with writing resumes, job searches, interview preparation, and securing co-op education opportunities. Other activities for high schools included three career exploration events, either supported or led by the board. Our most successful career exploration event was held at Allen County Scottsville High School, where we recruited more than 50 employers from all sectors to participate and interacted with nearly 1,200 students in a half a day's time. We helped lead or participate in three hiring events, bringing 122 employers to high school students, teaming up with the Bowling Green Area Chamber of Commerce and the College and Career Transition Coaches at Barron County High School, proved to be the most fruitful. And between the two, we finally discovered the right mix when putting on such events. We both implemented on-site interviews and hirings. Uh, we were intentional with the choosing employers and upfront with our expectations of them. All sectors were represented and all had jobs available for graduating students. From these events, we have 48 confirmed hires with more positive results coming in daily. For those students who went unhired or go unhired, we will continue providing job search assistance. To help students prepare for these events, we carried out a furious campaign of resume writing, leaving 200 and stu 209 students with a polished product that they will be able to continue adding to and using for job searching and class assignments throughout their lifetime. Students were taught about the parts of the resume, the reasons behind the parts, they were taught about spacing, branding, and the importance of tailoring the resume to each job posting. Simultaneously, 193 students received interview of students. These 193 uh, do not include the new best practice that Ms. Bethany Smith carried out for Barron County High School students, holding mock interviews with students by the employers participating in the Hire Me event in the four days leading up to the event. Go to the next slide, Brian. Ta -da. Yep. <laughs> so during the spring semester of 2022, the board made an impression on 5,638 high school students at board-led or co-led events. Uh, like interview assistance, this number does not include students at board-supported events, uh, such as Miss Smith's hiring me event. So, so these are numbers from events that the board ultimately planned and carried out at other locations. Next slide. Moving on to engagement at the region's colleges, Sky CTC and WKE. Like high schools, we met students where they were. With Sky CTC providing resources, uh, we were able to hold five on-campus recruiting events between the main campus, Katy campus, and Sky CT's Transpark Center. All activities were strategic and intentional. No throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Uh, these recruiting events were planned by sector and held at the location that matched the sector of the companies who participated. Sky CTC has an excellent rate of students being employed while attending school, most often in the sector of their degree program. Even with 85% of the students being employed, these recruiting events drew 167 students out to meet with 27 employers about employment opportunities that worked around their school schedules and post-graduation career opportunities. At Sky CTC and WKU, office hours were held by the board each week, resulting in 30 visits between the schools during the spring 2022 20, semester. Services provided to students included resume writing, job and internship searching, interview assistance, and helping make connections to regional employers. 
In total, 185 students were engaged with 21 confirmed hires. Um, and those results are still coming in as well. Through Career Team, we plan to continue and further develop similar activities at the region's high schools and colleges with the help of their leadership and personnel, along with partnering service providers during the next year. I believe we hand it over to Jasmine here. Yeah. All right, so now we'll talk about creating learning opportunities, one of our other strategic goals. So Ms. Jasmine, and Matt, we're very involved with that. Ms. Jasmine has an update for us. Okay, so um, during the spring of 2022, um, we worked with Dr. Kim Myers, um, Bethany Smith, and Whitney Choke on how to better serve the Hart County cohort, um, looking to pre-screen the participants who would, um, to see who would qualify for the training program and um, how to get the ball rolling. So the um, CDL cohort was organized for the students who would be leaving Hart County High School at the end of the school year, um, as well as Barron County too. The college and career coaches um, enlisted to identify the students with an interest in becoming truck drivers and who often overlooked occupation with a higher wage and extremely high demand across our region and beyond. So the CDL cohorts preparation activities picked up in April of 2022 with career team, um, the board and SKY CTC meet in the students where they were in the school at Hart and Barron County High Schools. Um, we went in, we pre-screened them. Um, um, we made sure that if they were not registered for selective services, it was a team. So Matt and I were diligently together to make sure that everything was taken care of um, in a timely manner. Um, and we looked to remove the financial barriers of the participants at the CDL um, cohort for those students. So these preparation activities continue throughout May with Dr. Myers providing orientation at the school. So again, meeting the students where they were, making them feel more comfortable because it was what they were used to. Um, and it didn't, you know, allow for them not to be able to attend because of transportation if that was to be a barrier. Um, we also were able to um, get their physical exam scheduled at the school too. So that way they wouldn't have to worry about um, driving down to Simpson County to get their physicals um, with the partner that um, is used for Sky, T Ooh, Sky CTC. Um, so as of today, we have six students from Hart County or from Barron County who are participating in the cohort that Dr. Myers and Sky CTC's Workforce Solutions is delivering in their backyard at the Hart County Fairgrounds. Um, their course will end on June 24th. And I talk to each of them regularly and they're all very excited about it. Um, I had some of them that did have to retest for their permit multiple times. And I, at first I was nervous that they were gonna give up, but they were so determined. They called me and be like, I didn't get it this time, but I got it next time. And so <laughs> it was just very good to hear that their determination and their willingness to continue. Um, I haven't had any issues with them, you know, having missing the class or, you know, getting there late, they're all there eager to learn and loving the opportunity. And as a social worker, this is what we love. We, we love to help, you know, advocate for the participants, um, connect them to the resources. And I mean, this, this was, this was my baby. <laughs> it was, and I'm well, excited for it. Well, Jasmine, on behalf of everybody, thank you for taking care of that baby. <laughs> and Matt, and, and I know Dr. Myers has joined us and huge props, and, and, and I'll, I'm going to let her say something here in a minute, too. Uh, Dr. Myers, if you would, um, just kind of from your standpoint, but I also want to thank her for the pictures that you see, because these are, this is not stock image. Uh, this is two days ago she sent these to me. So, I mean, that class is meeting as we speak, as we meet, and uh, and that, that shows you the, the faces and the individuals being impacted right now. Dr. Myers, what would you like to add? Well, I, I, I think, first of all, Brian, I would just say thank you for the partnership. I mean, th this is this CDL program from its get-go four years ago uh, has been a great example of what can happen when partners come together. And this one has been no exception. Uh, we started conversations about this actually last fall when we were approached by Whitney Choate, who was the college and career counselor there at Hart County and, and the judge as well. And um, and we talked about it back and forth and, and what would it, what it would take to, to get that done. So I, I can tell you that the partnership with the board, with career team, 
with Hart County Schools, Barron County Schools. We opened it up to up to all the schools there, Glasgow and Barron, or Glasgow and Caverna as well. <clears throat> and we had, uh, I think Jasmine went through the numbers uh, that, that existed. Um, and we we had the class in the high, at Hart County High School last week, and they are out on the range and on the road as we speak. Uh, our instructors are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, I warned them about working with 18 year olds, especially uh, 18 year old young men. And, uh, you know, we had a hiccup or two at the very beginning, but the, these guys have, uh, I mean, they have dug in and I, I am so, uh, so impressed with the work that they're putting forth. And I mean, you know, this is a life changing. Our average CDL graduate uh, earns a little over $52,000 in their first year. So these are kids coming right out of high school. Some thought about college. Some had just, I mean, flat out told me, I, I'm, I'm not going to college. Uh, but, you know, but they are now. They're in a workforce program. And uh, I think they're, they're, they've got the opportunity to change their life. Um, and I would be remiss, Brian, if I did not say publicly in front of this entire group that this group would not have happened. Uh, we would not have been able to, to get the things done leading up to that had it not been for Jasmine. I mean, she was and is a rock star. I have told her that personally, and I want to tell, uh, I, I want to speak that publicly in front of the board. Uh, I mean, having her as our go-to for CDL for the most part is a game changer. Uh, and I, I'm looking forward to many exciting things to come. We have gotten a request to repeat this because students had to be 18 prior to um, this past Monday to be able to participate because they have to be 18 to earn their license. And we had several that, that weren't yet. So uh, look for great things to come, but uh, just super excited about this. And one of many things that I think we're gonna be able to, to put out there in partnership with the board and, and career team and, and the schools and uh, uh, just super excited about it. So we, we appreciate the opportunity to be engaged. All right. I'd like to say something about one of the kids in the program, the people at school said to me, he'll never pass a drug test. And I'm like, he'll pass a drug test. He'll pass the drug test. And so on the way to Mark County that day, I said, whatever you do, you better be passing this drug test because then I'm going to send it campus wide that you pass the drug test because I have faith in you that you're going to do this. And he passed the drug test and he's in the program. And now I can send it campus wide that this kid, who everybody thought was going to be not successful, like everybody counted out because of his background, is now going to be making more than most of his high school teachers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, literally, it is it is truly life-changing for these kids. I mean, truly life-changing. And so um, I'm thankful for it and thankful for the partnership with um, South Central Kentucky and um, the Workforce Development Board. But, and I do think going forward, you'll get a lot more students. My biggest problem in Marion County is a lot of my students hadn't taken their driver's test. Part of that was COVID. Some of that, they made bad grades during COVID. Some of it, their parents didn't have transportation or they didn't want to get. So they were 18, but still didn't have their regular driver's license. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be better with COVID, you know, calming down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Brian, I, I, if I can just say one more thing, too, that... Um, the, the college and career counselors um, at the schools, I mean, you know, Whitney Chota, Hart County, and then Bethany Smith there at Barron County. I mean, that, they were there at that orientation. They brought those students. Uh, we, we couldn't have done it without, I mean, it, it literally took everybody that's been engaged in this program to make it work, uh, you know, including Matt. He and I worked on a, a lot of things and, and glad to see him continuing, you know, in a, in a position uh, with career team. But uh I mean, it's it's just uh, it is a testament, and and I hope the first or one of many to come, probably not the first, but one of many to come that uh, you know are a testament to what happens when you know when when the people who can get things done figure out how to work together to get it done, and I, and I know this group has done that, so I appreciate it. So Brian, as a board member, I would like to say thank you all. There's a young man in this group that's very dear to me. Actually, his mother contacted me probably almost two years ago about how he could go about getting his CDL. And uh, I told her about this program. And uh, we really thought that he was going to just give up because he's so many barriers uh, he was faced with. But uh, I've seen this post on Facebook of friends with him 
about how excited he was that he was finally getting to graduate to do something that he really wanted to do. So thank you guys. It is. I'll add to this too. Um, because they are the youth population, we have to do the individual um, strategy, like the services we call the ISS. And so when we were filling it out, it asked on there, have you ever attended post-secondary school? And so their list on there, like, I'm going to Scott. I never thought I'd go to college. <laughs> and so they're so excited about it. Yeah. It's just the little things. And I mean, I took over the CDL program um, with career team as the career advisor for that too in February. And I mean, one thing that I love, because I mean, you, you sell them the truth, like with Sky and my participants, with it, like they go, they attend and their success rate is really high. It's literally a hundred percent. And then you might have some who have like anxiety, but I have anxiety too. Mm -hmm. So they might not get it the first time, but it's literally, they'll have four people that we might pay for in that cohort and three out of four will pass the first time. I've had it where every one of them passed the first time. So the success rate's there. So, I mean, you're telling them how it really is and working with the youth population. Um, I had one who was 21. He passed his CDL test, got a job that next Tuesday, $25 an hour. So, I mean, these kids, they are very vulnerable. They're low income. They a lot of them didn't come with anything. And so to tell them, you know, like you finish this course, you give it your all, you know, you're setting yourself up for success. And nobody believes in them. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we're not done yet, folks. So don't take your seatbelts <laughs> off yet. But I will say they're also brave. I rented a small RV one time and drove it to Dawson <laughs> Springs and I will never do that again. So I can't imagine being 18 and driving a big 18 wheeler. <laughs> So, uh, all right. So now we want to highlight again how we're creating learning opportunities, and we're calling an audible because unfortunately uh, Bianca Wilson with Career Team could not be available. Um, she's on assignment out in the field, um, but we will have Matt give an update on a, a work experience highlight that we have from Miss Jackie. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Bianca is meeting with clients today, so I want to do my best, but I'm sure I'm not going to do it the justice that she could. Uh, this is uh, Jackie Brocher. Uh, she came to career team interested in gaining skills needed to help uh, on her journey of obtaining a bachelor's degree in human resources management at WKU. Uh, she had heard of WIOA and career team through Gretchen Bandy at Sumitomo and Electric Wiring Company. Uh, with Gretchen's help, Sumitomo agreed to assist Jackie with gaining experience in the human resources field uh, to help her build up her resume and give her a competitive advantage uh, with, with gaining employment after completing her degree. Jackie showcased her skills and successfully completed the WEX program with Sumitomo. And at the end of the WEX uh, program, Sumitomo offered her a full-time position and has agreed to work around her school schedule for the upcoming semesters. Uh, Jackie expresses that she has grown her knowledge in the HR field and the experience made possible through WIOA and uh, a willing partner employer with Ms. Bandy has been a most beneficial experience. So thank you, Gretchen. Gretchen, would you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, um, this was a, a great program for, for us um, to be able to have her. Our, as, as it is with everyone, our budgets were tight and I and the budget for an intern was not there this year. So the We Owe a program allowed us to have that intern and um, basically take a test drive with Jackie and she did great and she continues to do really well with us. So this is a really good opportunity for uh, these young people to say, hey, give me a try. I've, I've even got my salary paid. All you have to do is let me show up, you know, so it's a great program and lets them uh, showcase their skills. So we're, we were glad to be able to, to use this program. Great, thank you. All right, and we also have, an, like I said, an update on our heavy equipment sciences pathway. So we'll toss it back to Matt for how we're uh, working on our strategic goal to increase dual credit credentialing opportunities with partners. Yeah, so I also have to give credit to the CDL drivers because what you see there on the right side is a 26 foot box truck. Uh, and with the pedal mash, it maxed out at about 65 miles an hour. Uh, and with a, you know, a, a three and a half or I guess a six and a half hour trip is what it was supposed to be. Uh, it turned out pretty long, um, but also had to remain 
pretty pretty cognizant of what was in the rear end of the truck. And there's about four hundred thousand dollars there in those cardboard boxes. Um, in addition to all the student-centered activities you've heard about so far, we have an update on the heavy equipment science pathway that you first heard about during the fall of 2021. Uh, with the help of our partner schools, uh, Warren County Public Schools and Sky CTC, and regional employers in the construction sector, we are on track to deliver the Commonwealth's third such high school program this coming fall semester, beginning in August 2022. Uh, and this program will see up to 40 students through uh, each year uh, that can go on to, to work in the construction sector operating heavy equipment. Um, to date, in coordination with the Bowling Green Area Chamber of Commerce, Sky CTC, and Warren County Public Schools, Warren County Public Schools and multiple employers in the construction sector. The board secured grant funding of $392,000 plus uh, for the purchase of four heavy equipment simulators that will be used to train participants on the bulldozer and excavator uh, so far. These, these simulators have the ability to add more software and more pieces of equipment to them. In addition to the grant funding, classroom space at the Warren County ATC, up to 100 acres. Uh, adjacent to the ATC and the Kentucky Trans Park, and the actual heavy equipment to train on have all been secured. Uh, during the final days of May, the board made the trip to CAT in East Peoria, Illinois, and delivered the simul simulators to the Warren County ATC. Uh, with the help of all involved, especially Sky CTC and Warren County Public Schools, uh, the next step is to secure the instructor and Dr. Myers and Sky CTC have that position posted now. In addition to up to 40 high school students being trained annually for high wage, high demand employment immediately after high school, Dr. Myers will offer short term and incumbent worker training in heavy equipment operations to youth and adults uh, through Sky CTC's workforce solutions. This training is planned to be four to six weeks um, or as determined by the employer. Um, in addition, uh, we're looking uh, for a, a third a third pipeline of students and Dr. Uh, Sky CT's president, Dr. Neal, is considering a four credit uh, option for as early as spring or fall of 2023 uh, with the high school and workforce uh, opportunities for training in place. The academic certificate and or degree option will be the third source of prospective heavy equipment operators for the severely shorthanded construction industry in South Central Kentucky. And again, these jobs like CDL first year can start out around $50,000 a year. Um, and as they uh, continue to gain experience, get up to around $70,000 a year. So again, these are, these are students with um, a high school diploma or GED that are gonna go into this program and come out making, again, more than their teachers. We love our teachers. Yeah, so um, long story short here, you know, the board the board got the grant and we also got the simulator. So what Matt didn't say is that he drove. <laughs> when he's saying how fast that box truck could go, when he put the pedal all the way down, that's because he was the one that then went and picked it up. So thank you, Matt, for making that truck out there to get those. Yeah. And um, and so, yeah, that's that's sort of our contribution. We, we literally are unloading it now to the educational institutions and um, you know, we obviously think that there'll be WIOA funds in the future that can be earmarked uh, to, to help enable people to go through this, just like we have with CDL. Any questions about that? So what, what we maybe haven't come right out and said is that Matt is in a new role. Um, so if you've been following social media, so we want to say congratulations that, that Matt Bacon is now the executive director of career team. And so that carries some implications that John's going to go into as far as what his position was doing and what it will continue to do. Yes, thank you. So, um, so but before we move to the next, uh, uh, the, the next uh, strategic goal, I mean, I just want to zoom out a little bit and put a bow on, you know, you, you've seen what Matt and Jasmine, but, you know, you've seen what we've done in term, this spring in terms of how we've served youth, you know, high school and college youth, uh, this just, just in the last four months, uh, really impressive work, really impressive numbers. Um, uh, but when you zoom out from that, I mean, let me zoom out and just kind of start at the beginning. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, when I was, when Dr. Boone was in my seat and I was working for him, 
you know, we we were having a lot of engagement. We were having a lot of meetings, and we we were we were seeing a lot of disconnects. We were seeing where the, a lot of students weren't being connected with local opportunities, and that, I mean they're really obvious when you start looking around. I mean just um, and so what we conceived at that time was like, hey, let's go after a statewide reserve grant and see if we can get somebody that we can put into a position that can really interact with employers and high schools and colleges and alumni networks and community partner agencies and of course our Kentucky Career Center and, and the services they provide and help try to like weave this together and close some of these gaps so if you go build one so so we, we were fortunate we were able to get we were able to secure the funding for it and that led us to you know posting the job and and ultimately hiring Matt which is a, a terrific uh, that was a terrific uh, decision to hire him. And so we were able to get that first round of funding. We were able to get a second round of funding. And so really he's been in, in the position for two years now. Um, and just, you know, with the numbers we just showed you and the, and the, and the testimony that we just provided, um, you know, that, that, that really describes well what he's been able, the effort he's been able to lead to close those gaps. Uh, we weren't getting those kind of those the kind of numbers didn't exist two years ago uh, or three years ago. I mean, this work wasn't being done by the workforce board on a full time basis. We did, um, you know, three years ago have a career advisor that was doing this on a very very part time basis, and but it was and it was a good effort, but it wasn't enough effort. And so, um, what this position has really proved is that if you dedicate somebody to it and somebody that's got to be really talented that can navigate each one of these you know navigate each one of these uh, uh, groups you can have you can achieve significant results now that said um, matt is taking on a new role and some of you may be following this but he is you know uh, amanda pedigo who has been our career team executive director is taking a corporate role with career team and Matt uh, applied to backfill her role as the executive director, and he he was selected for that. So he is he is kind of in the seat right now. Uh, he's got one foot as the executive director, and he's finishing up a little bit of work with us as we go through a transitory period with him. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But if you could go forward a slide, really, it, what what we we sat down with Matt said, okay, what are the over the last two years? What are the three biggest things that you learned? What's the three most impactful things? Um, that you've done that we've got to figure out how to continue. And so if you build one, so first is what, what proved really, really beneficial was being able to interact with particularly high school students and college students, but saying, hey, listen, these are the jobs. These are the great paying jobs we have in this region. You don't have to go to Nashville or Louisville or, or some other major metropolitan area to get a good paying quality job. We have them right here in South Central Kentucky. And so you know, he, he felt that that was very impactful, and that is something we have to sustain uh, as he moves on. The other one was, and he, he talked about this, um, getting in front of students and just talking to, making them aware that college is an option. I mean, um, college is a retention strategy. You know, if we can, you know, obviously we need people to go right into the workforce, but but if we can go get them to, if they didn't know they could go to Sky or Western and we help them get there, we hey, we've kept them in the region a little bit longer. We can continue to work with them and work on them and retain them as they come out of the out of, out of that college pipeline. And then lastly, um, what's been really impactful, especially this spring, is, is getting employers onto, whether it's onto a high school campus or onto a college campus. Uh, you know, those, those students are captured audiences. And if we can get in there and bring the right employers and match those employers to what those students are studying, that has been super impactful. And that is definitely something that we have to sustain um, as, as we lose Matt's position. So I'm gonna, I'll pause, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick back up on, on these three things here in a minute when I talk, when I when it comes back to me, and I'll talk about our kind of transition on our continuity plan um, momentarily. So I'll turn it back over to you, Brian. Okay. All right, thank you. So um, we'll jump into strategic goal number three, which again is hard to keep it completely um, distinguished from the other strategic goals, but this is about increasing our regional workforce participation um, and specifically working with some of our what we call focus populations. And so as I kind of peel back and look and show you guys the larger projects that we've done, the first thing I need to say is that um, hopefully everybody sees a, a, a face and a name uh, that you may not have seen, or I think he joined the last board meeting was brand, brand new, but we do have a uh, 
Fort Campbell uh, career navigator, uh, Mike Daly. So welcome, Mike, and uh, so glad to have you. So he's based down at Fort Campbell, um, hawking the wares of South Central Kentucky uh, to those uh, transitioning military. Uh, Mike, anything you want to say real quick? Uh, I'm, I, I'm actually looking forward to working for this position. Um, I've enjoyed listening and standing in this meeting so far, but I do need to jump off real quick and go brief the SFL TAP classes and start working this little mini job there and try to get some employers, some uh, workforce for out there. That is a great excuse. We will. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great. So every, every day Mike gets to get in front of it. At a minimum, he gets in front of 30 to 30 to 45 students in a classroom going through a transition class. Every day it's a different, it's, he goes into a different classroom and he gets in front of him and says, I'm Mike Daly, I'm here to help you. We have great opportunities and a great quality of life in South Central Kentucky, come see me and uh, let me work with you. So that's what he's off to go do. So where's he located? At Fort Campbell, he's right inside the uh, Army Transition Center. They've gracious, graciously given us office space right inside that building. And so every service member that's getting out has to go through that building, spend a week in that building, going through classes and preparing to leave. And so, He's he's there uh, trying to get get them uh, get them enlisted. He's going to re-enlist enlist them to come work uh, in uh, in South Central Kentucky. That's that's what he's trying to do. And we'll mention too, and remind everybody that that's possible through uh, braided funding that we have from both the uh, the City of Bowling Green and and Warren County Fiscal Court, uh, making that possible. So uh, they they definitely uh, caught on to the vision of of needing dedicated full time support. Um, connecting connecting people and employers similar to what you've heard us talk about with the student experience. We've also have uh, Anna San Cristofal um, who uh, joined us the last meeting as well, and um, she is our new American workforce navigator. And so lots of exciting uh, discussions and projects are going forth with, with that program. And uh, just yesterday we were making a, a presentation in an apartment with a group of uh, Afghan men uh, with our shoes off and uh, being served warm tea. And so this is. Um, one of the perks of <laughs> of the job is it takes us uh, it takes us all where where people are and, uh, and sometimes they welcome us into their homes. So, um, as far as other projects and and efforts uh, with Strategic Goal Three, um, like I said uh, earlier, that participation um, group, the workforce group, is developing into a task force. Um, there's some positions being pegged again uh, that might be created out of that effort. Um, we've been continuing to, to nail down and refine an, an effort that hasn't necessarily launched in our South Central region, but is being refined over in the Cumberlands with reentry called um, Putting Kentuckians First. And um, our reentry staff, Aaron and Jenna and, uh, and Myra Wilson, have been heavily involved with that. Um, we've also launched and been doing some resume workshops, so kind of re, uh, you know, turning the switch back on to some in-person opportunities at the Career Center. Um, where we've had uh, people that uh, we've even had a few people that have never made a resume before come and get some hands on help. Um, so we've taken that idea as well as the Talent Tuesdays and we've kind of tried to stagger those. So, for example, we were offering Monroe County this week the opportunity to come do that resume workshop in preparation for the Talent Tuesday job fair that we will have uh, there next week. And so uh, as well, we've we've done a lot with uh, are we going internships and on the job training? So as far as where we would be assessing ourselves with that, um, you know, this is one of those areas we we started the year in a pretty good spot, but we continue. I mean, we've made major leaps here having these dedicated positions. Um, and again, we'll mention how even though we don't have Matt's role, how we're going to continue those functions here. So um, tremendous progress with our our focus populations. And I'll turn it back to John for how we're maintaining viability of our financial growth. Yeah, strategic goal number four is really what I consider kind of our internal our internal processes. Um, uh, strategic goal focused on that and focused on good return on investment. So kind of keeping with the same methodology, uh, you know, what you see on the screen are some of the major things we've been working on towards this end. Um, obviously, we've been we've been aggressively pursuing all kinds of grant funding for you know. And so, for positions and for equipment, right? We've we've had some wins and we've had some we've had some partial wins and we've had some misses on this, uh, but but we've always been very aggressive. I, we're probably the most aggressive workforce board in the state in terms of going after statewide grant funding. Um, I think they might be a little bit sick of us at this point, but we're, we nonetheless keep going after it. Um, you know, we are. I'm going to talk a minute in a minute about the Kentucky Career Center certification process that's upcoming, um, fiscal and program programmatic. Monitoring. I mean, I think 
there's probably not a meeting that goes by that we don't make some mention of this. We are um, at, at any given point in the year, you, we are usually under some type of audit or monitoring. So right now we're kind of in the middle of a statewide look at our, pro, our, our fiscal and programmatic uh, compliance. And then as Holland mentioned, we are, we are kind of in the prep phase for an external independent monitoring that will happen. Um, it'll kick off here uh, in about a month in, in July and we'll run through the summer. So we're two times a year, we're being looked at, we're being looked at by two different entities to make sure that, um, that we're compliant with, that we're compliant with Department of Labor regulations and that we're, you know, that we're fiscally, res you know, responsible with uh, the government dollars that we steward. Uh, internally, we are really working, uh, we're working uh, to figure out how to revamp the customer service we offer within the Career Center. Um, you know, we've identified that procedurally and process-wise, there's a few things that we need to do to streamline how customers get served, and we're working through that as a team. Um, and then, um, you know, I'm, we're doing... We're uh, continuing to incubate the My Workforce Future nonprofit, and obviously we're in the last month of our fiscal year, and so we're, we're closely monitoring the spend down of those dollars. If you go forward a slide, or to kind of be where we assess ourselves. The one thing I'll say on all these assessments that we pr we present you, we're, we're very conservative on our assessments. We grade ourselves very hard, so I don't know that you'll ever see us fully in the green. Um, but we 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 trend we tend to be pretty uh, pretty stringent on how we assess ourselves. So we we keep our our ratings fairly modest. Uh, if you'll go forward a slide, Brian. Uh, so I want to talk. What I want to talk about right now uh, is just talk about some of these transitions. So um, um, what you see up on the tr on the screen right now is I I've got ten positions at the board level right now. The five on the top are all funded through WIOA dollars. And then the, there's five positions on the bottom that are all funded through grant dollars. And, the, and, and when when you have grant funded positions, you know you kind of live and die by those. The you know grant funding comes and grant funding goes, unfortunately. And and you do your best when you get a grant, you do your best to get it again and again as long as you can. Uh, but unfortunately, this year, I mean, we we did secure a re-entry grant again, but not for the full amount that we requested. And then um, and then Matt's decision to apply for the career team executive director role um, and, and, and getting the executive director role, um, you know, it, it, it kind of worked out in that we, I had, I had about half of what I needed secured for Matt's position, but there was still about half I still needed to get through grant funding that, that did not come through. I found out two days ago that it did not come through. So, if you'll build one. So, what we're going to do, we're going to end up, you know, kind of lose it and build one more. You know, come July 1st, we're really going to be down two positions. Um, um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I, as much as I would love to sustain the work that or have have a director of secondary and post-secondary programming, uh, we don't have the funding for that right now. And as much as we need to have that second reentry position, we do not have that funding guaranteed, as I say here today. So right now, worst case scenario, we are losing those two positions by July 1st. Um, so let's go forward one. So let me talk a little bit about Matt's, how we're going to sustain what Matt, the Matt, the work that Matt's been doing. So I'm going to circle back to what I what I talked about a few minutes ago. The three most successful, impactful things that Matt did are presented on this, are presented at the top here. It's 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 getting in front of students and talking about the labor, you know, what's available in our market in our labor market, what are the opportunities. It's talking to them about college opportunities, and it's it's getting employers onto campus to meet with those students. Um, so if you build, Brian, you know, so there's a little bit of narrative around um, how we plan to attack that. Now, the good news is, is Matt isn't going far. Matt's going to become the executive director. Uh, and, and, and part of what, part of the strategy is that um, as we go forward is we're going to, and I talked about this in February and I talked about it a little bit again, a little bit of it again in our April meeting, but part of our strategy this year is to get our career advisors and our staff out of the career center more. Um, you know, people aren't necessarily coming down to the career center seeking help, so we got to go to them. So part of the strategy is we're uh, we're going to identify the right staff to go out and get in front of students, and who better to kind of direct that and promote that than Matt? Because they'll you know 
Um, uh, some of those staff will be working for Matt, so he'll be able to hand off relationships and 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 be able to get kind of easily get his staff into those schools onto campus in front of students and continuing the same things that we've been doing. And then um, and then in terms of bringing employers to campus, I mean, we think, you know, we have a, we have a business services team that, you know, who are career team employees who can also kind of continue that effort. It's that's a matter of um, uh, talking to the schools and then going out and finding the right employers and matching up the employers with whatever building or whatever campus you're going to be on that day for a mini hiring event. And so we think we're going to be able to really, you know, although we're going to lose Matt in the role at the board, um, he's not going far. And we think, you know, his new position uh, and his leadership will allow him to kind of activate some of our staff to continue that work. And then we we have and then we have other partners in the community that we can certainly kind of bring into the fold, uh, like KHEAA and TRIO to uh, to continue to help us to continue to help in this effort. I mean, we're all, there's a lot of alignment there. And so it's just a matter of, um, you know, kind of continuing this effort, but doing it through some of our own staff and internal staff and doing it through partnership with, with like-minded organizations. Uh, in terms of re-entry, um, you know, so, you know, we have right now, as of today, we have two full-time positions. We've got the director of re-entry program, that's Aaron Pointer. And we have our reentry navigator, Janice Snell. Uh, so, you know, the way I would describe Aaron's position, he's kind of that outward facing person that's going out and talking to county attorneys and court systems and uh, 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 recovery centers, any, anybody that's kind of judicial related and, and, and developing those relationships and identifying opportunities to establish programs and processes, really to identify a talent pipeline for folks coming out of reentry or coming out of a coming out of recovery. And he's getting kind of those agreements put in place and developing that pipeline. And then it's been Jana who's really, the, you know, I would call Jana our, the, our, 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 our secret weapon. She's been the backbone of this effort because the people coming out of that pipeline are, are ending up, they're talking to Jana. Jana is that initial point of contact. She's talking to them, figuring out what they need. Sometimes they need to go to a partner agency to get other needs met before they're ready for work. Other times she can refer them straight to an employer. Sometimes they get referred down to career team. I mean, it just depends on what they need. She does that. And then obviously she keeps close track on all the data. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're not getting fully funded for both of those positions, unfortunately. Um, and so right now, I mean, we're gonna lose one. And, um, you know, so if you'll build, and, and, and right now, and, and Jana's on with this and she knows this, but, you know, right now, Jana's, Jana's position is gonna sunset at the end of the month. Um, and so, what that means, go ahead and build, Brian. You know, Aaron's got to pick up and do what Jan has been doing. He's got to kind of, he's got to reprioritize his day to do some of that. Go ahead and build again. She's not, and everybody noticed how the headphones went on Aaron's Aaron's head there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, part of what this means is, and we've been, I mean, we're working through this, and we don't have this 100% figured out, but part of this has got to be, we've got to help. Aaron kind of prioritizes his work. There's going to be some, we've got to take a little bit of an appetite suppressant and scale back on some of those public speaking engagements and some of that outreach. And we, we really need to focus on like which partners are ready now to do something meaningful, right? So not, not every county is in the same place in terms of what they're willing to do for reentry or recovery. So let's find the ones that are ready and willing. And then that's where we kind of hone Aaron in to do what he does best, which is build build programs and agreements. And then, you know, and so by prioritizing on that, you know, he's also got to carve out time to, you know, to do some of the things that Jan has been doing in terms of providing individualized assistance and follow-up. We do think we can provide a little bit of help there. Again, kind of like what I talked about before. I mean, we think there's capacity to have uh, maybe some career center staff help with some of the individualized assistance or, and follow-up. We think there's some, some opportunity to enlist other partners, community partners in providing assistance. And, and kind of that last bullet there, kind of the big idea, and this is kind of the USO model, is, is, is we think that maybe there's some people in our community that have a real heart for helping folks coming out of recovery or coming out of, uh, coming out of confinement that may want to volunteer to do some, you know, some light work, some phone call follow-up, some kind of tracking on how people are doing, 
and uh, and help us out in that regard. So um, right now, that's kind of how we're, we plan to uh, to tackle this. Uh, what I will say is that in that, that I haven't said yet is you know what I've showed you is that Janice position sunsets and that we lose her, but. I'm working very closely with Myra Wilson, uh, my counterpart in the Cumberlands. We kind of have a plan A and plan B for Jana that we're working on. So we think we, we might not lose her completely. We might be able to hang on to her, but in, in, a, in some form or fashion, it might change her daily duties somewhat, but we're, we're not, um, we're not, we don't, we don't feel like we're saying goodbye to Jana. We may be saying, Jana, we're going to, we're going to move you into a slightly different role if if so if either plan a or plan b works out which i think one of them might then um you'll continue you'll continue to see her name um you know um pop up in these forums and and and, and, and i think she may continue to have some some modified role in doing what she's been doing so but i can't i can't say none of that is 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 kind of for sure at this moment so i'm just kind of portraying worst case scenario we go from two to one and, the, and, and Aaron gets to add a lot more to his plate. All right, so any, any, any questions or concerns before I move on to the final, uh, the final thing that I have to present, which is the Kentucky Career Center certification. Hey, John, this is Rebecca. So, so we weren't funded, so do you have a feel for uh, what caused us to uh, not be funded? Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is a public meeting, and so I mean, I, I can only speculate, but I, I, I what I would speculate um, is that I think there were some politics in Frankfurt that 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 got involved. I mean, um, what I you know, we asked for one hundred and twelve thousand to sustain both of these positions. There was a lot of support in the cabinet for that, but at the end of the day, we didn't get the full amount. We only got a partial amount. And um, um, I think there may have been some politics involved in, in that decision. But I, I, I can't say that for sure because I'm not in the room and I don't know. And normally when we get a declination letter, there are reasons given. It happened with our heavy equipment attempts a couple of times. We didn't get that kind of information in our declination letter this time. We got, congratulations, you're getting 69,000. Um, let it, take it or leave it. That was kind of the, the tone of what, of, of the letter, so. Any, any other questions uh, regarding some of the, kind of the, 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 the transition that's happening and, the, and our continuity, our continuity plan? Not in this form. <laughs> not in this form. Okay. All right. Um, okay. We'll go. Okay. Last thing I'll touch on is, uh, and I, we uh, go ahead and build, Brian. We we're uh, we're kind of in the process of doing a Kentucky Career Center Center certification. This is a requirement by the by law. It has to happen once every three years. Our last one was in 2019, and that means it's 2022, and we are we are in the process of, of, of doing it again. And really what it's about is in, in, in our region, we have two career centers, one in Bowling Green, one in Glasgow. And the, the certification is meant to, 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 to be an external look where people come in and make sure that the career center is functioning as designed, that, that we're delivering services to employers and job seekers, and, and that we've got a customer focus and that it's in alignment with our strategic plan and, 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 and the plans that we have for this region and so forth. So uh, go build one more. So what's going on? I mean, right now, there's a pretty exhaustive checklist that's broken up into different, broken up into different uh, categories. So right now, our, st our staff in the Career Center, that's been parceled out. Frank is kind of, Frank is our one-stop operator is leading the effort, but he's parceled out that checklist we got the staff kind of working on their individual parts and pieces of it. Frank will get all that collected back up uh, by June 21st, and he'll he'll kind of mash everything together, clean it up. He'll present it to me by the end of the month. And then what I've got to do in the month of July is I've got to form a four-person review team, and that review team's got to be comprised of somebody from our business community, a board member from outside of our region, 
uh, a community partner, you know, Goodwill, Audubon Area Service, some, you know, from a community partner agency. And I have to have one of you, I have to have a South Central Workforce Development Board, board member volunteer. And what will happen over on a one day period is that review team will come together. You'll have the checklist and you will physically go down to the Kentucky Career Center, both locations, and we'll kind of go through the checklist and um, you guys will validate that the things that we say we're doing are actually happening. And then the goal, the goal would be go through that pro that one day review process. We'll, we'll, we'll capture the results. And then at the August board meeting, we'll present back to the full board um, the, the kind of the, an update on our certification. And ultimately, if it gets approved, then it goes on up to the state, to the, to the labor cabinet, and it goes on file that our two Kentucky career centers have been recertified locally. So barring any questions about that, you will, in, in, in the very near future, I will be soliciting a volunteer who, who will want to spend a, spend a day with us going through our Kentucky Career Center as part of this review team. We haven't come up with disguises yet, but that disguises may, may or may not be involved. So. <laughs> Maybe secret shoppers. Secret shoppers? No. All right. Um, we'll move on. So yeah, this time we just want to entertain any Final thoughts, questions, feedback. Um, I, I didn't say it earlier. I do want to thank Dr. Myers. She, she's supposed to be off right now. And so she has joined the meeting. And uh, and thank you for coming on and making those comments, Dr. Myers. But anybody else, uh, board members, before we have community partners, anybody else have uh, comments, questions, thoughts, discussion? So the new wheel that's coming into play, have you already looked at that and seen how it will affect? Because it's already passed the house. And I, I think it's probably inside that um, A little bit. I, I, I've got some more. I, I, I need to devote a little bit more time to it, though. Yeah, they did some additions like you. Yeah, I, I've got to. I've got to kind of drill down and, and figure out what those, what that is, and what those ramifications might be local. Okay. But I, I'm not, not where I should be probably on that yet. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Look at us. We're getting through another short meeting, everybody. Any any community partners, anybody who's not a board member would like to chime in, share? Staff? Bueller? Oh, Matt, you got your hand up? Oh, no. Oh, okay. You're, are you waving at the virtual screen? I've spoken. Matt, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I will uh, remind everybody that we will have our next meeting on August 11th. And um, Trev, I'll turn it back over to you. Hey, thank you, Brian. Um, thank you all so much for your participation this morning and to your service um, to this board. And if we don't have anything uh, further to discuss, um, today's meeting is now adjourned. You'll have a great day. Bye.